EVs offer significant advantages over combustion-powered cars and trucks, but if you're looking to make the switch to an electric and have only ever driven something that runs on gas or diesel, it can be very confusing. Never fear, though. Here are five simple rules every electric vehicle owner should know and follow so they can get the most out of their car or truck. Let's count them down. Okay, rule number five. For the best electric vehicle experience, you pretty much need to have a level two AC charger in your garage or carport or wherever you park your EV. These chargers, technically electric vehicle supply equipment or EVSEs if you're feeling pedantic, allow you to replenish a vehicle's battery pack overnight so it's topped up and ready to go first thing in the morning. And of course, this is incredibly convenient because you pretty much always have a full tank, and for local driving at least, you will never need to use a public charger. Now, that being said, yes, some motorists that don't travel very far, or if they charge up at work, for instance, can get away with using a much slower 110 volt level one charger at home, but they are certainly the exception to our rule. Also, level two chargers are usually exceedingly affordable, though they can cost a pretty penny if you need electrical work or a service upgrade, so be aware of potential additional expenses. Alrighty then, rule number four, avoid DC fast charging when slower charging will do. Of course, this is the only practical way to quickly travel long distances in an electric vehicle, and DC fast charging, of course, is perfectly fine, 100% A-OK -okay to do, it's just that it puts a lot of stress on an EV's battery pack, and of course, it's way more expensive than just juicing up at home. So if you want to maximize your vehicle's life, get the most out of the battery that you possibly can, DC fast charging only when necessary is the way to go. And just like the previous rule, having a level two charger at home means you can minimize how much you have to DC fast charge. Moving right along, rule number three is plan ahead. You can't replenish an EV's battery like filling a gas tank. That's not how it works, at least not yet. So if you're taking an electric vehicle on a long trip, look up charging stations along your route before hitting the road. Selecting a few alternate locations is not a bad idea either, so there are no surprises when it's time to juice up. You know, it wasn't that long ago that we all kept maps or an atlas in the car just in case, and this situation is no different. Now, of course, many newer EVs feature dynamic route planning, which helps to locate ideal chargers, but there are several great third-party services as well, including a better route planner. Also, remember that extreme heat and especially cold conditions can significantly reduce an electric vehicle's range, so if you're trekking to grandma's house to celebrate St. Agnew's name day or birthday, two of my favorite made-up holidays, make sure to leave home with a full battery or prepare to charge earlier and more often than you might normally. Additionally, it's a good idea to install various charging network apps into your smartphone and then sign in or create an account for the ones you need. This way, you're ready to go and don't have to fumble with passwords or credit cards when you're trying to charge. And finally, be aware that carrying heavy loads or driving in hilly terrain can negatively impact vehicle range, so take that into consideration when planning a trip. Basically, until public chargers are as numerous as gas stations, you need to do a little extra legwork for a seamless experience. Rule number two is go big or go home. When shopping for an EV, it's a good idea to get the model with the most range that you can reasonably afford. If granny lives, say, 200 miles away in the next state, an electric vehicle that's rated at 250 miles on a charge will technically work, but if it's the middle of winter, there are strong headwinds, or you're carrying a heavy load, you might have to stop and charge, which takes extra time and, of course, can be very annoying. Conversely, if you purchase the trim level that offers 300 miles of range, this wouldn't necessarily be an issue at all. So that's our recommendation. Get an EV with more range than you think you'll need. Your future self will probably thank your present self, which I guess would technically also be past you if you buy an EV after watching this video. Or don't. You have to decide for yourself what's best for you. 
I can't tell any temporal version of you what to do. It's not my place. And finally, rule number one, arguably our most important EV tip is only DC fast charge to 80%. And I know, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it actually saves you a ton of time. And here's why. Electric vehicles charge the fastest when they're between about 10 and 80%. That's why manufacturers commonly list charging times for this range. But if a battery state of charge is outside of this window, DC fast charging slows down dramatically, especially as a pack approaches 100%. Now here's an example to illustrate what I mean. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 is a fast charging champion. It's able to go from 10 to 80% in an incredibly quick 18 minutes, something our independent testing has proven. How long does it take to get all the way to 100? Well, for us, the car needed an additional 33 minutes to completely fill the battery. And that's nearly twice as long as it took to go from 10 to 80 which is not a good use of time. Honestly, if you stop at 80 and then continue on your journey, you can pop in for a quick charge at the next station instead of waiting around for that last 20%. Stopping at 80 is a much more efficient way of DC fast charging, and it's something a lot of new EV owners should know about. Of course, if you're not in a hurry or if you're driving through an area where there aren't many DC fast chargers, something you'd know if you planned your route out, again, that's rule number two for reference, you may want to go all the way to 100%, but just know it's gonna take a while. So again, install a level two charger at home if you can, avoid DC fast charging like all the time, plan your trips well in advance, get the model with the most range that you can reasonably afford, and to make the best use of your time, only DC fast charge to about 80%. Now, if you already knew these handy dandy tips, congrats, you're well on your way to maximizing the EV ownership experience. The next thing you'll need to brush up on is electric vehicle maintenance. EVs generally require way less upkeep than combustion powered cars and trucks, except for one critical area. Click over here for all the details.